Hey everybody, I wanted to make a video specifically about carabiners, more uh, about all the different types of carabiners, all the different uses the different types have, good applications for them, and then just have a good overall basic video talking about carabiner specs and uh, what they're good for. So let's just hop right into it. I wanted to talk about the specific parts of a carabiner at first. Right here, this big metal bar, this is known as the spine. The part that holds the rope, and you see the bigger part in this case, that's not the smaller part. This is called the basket. This right here is known as the gate that opens up from the carabiner. The part that the gate goes into right here is called the nose. So those are some basic parts. There are more to them. You can look them up online, but those are the main parts that you want to know in order to use these things properly. Another thing to look at is along the spine, and they'll have these on every carabiner, are a bunch of uh, numbers, really. And so these are the strength ratings of carabiners. You'll notice how it starts off with arrows that go from this way to the carabiner. This is what we call the major axis. And you'll see how it says 25. That means there's 25 kilonewtons of force you can exert on this, and it should be able to hold. Now, for those of you who don't know what kilonewtons are, you can look up a converter on the uh, interwebs, but a kilonewton is roughly 220 pounds. So it can hold 25 of those. It makes about, uh, I think, 2,500 pounds, somewhere around that amount. Uh, very hard for a human to generate that amount of force, but it's uh, it can happen in some circumstances that you do generate high forces, and so it's good to have a carabiner that can hold much more than that. You'll notice the next one, it says it has arrows going this way and says seven. That means that if the carabiner were to be cross-loaded, that is loaded uh, from the spine to the nose, something like this, with outward force, then it can only hold seven kilonewtons. And so that's a big drop right there from the major axis versus this horizontal axis right there. Uh, but, um, and everyone sort of freaks out about that, like, oh, dude, you're cross-loaded. But uh, I've fallen on many cross-loaded carabiners before, and they've not broken, and I've been just fine. So it still is very strong in this setting. You do want to avoid it if you can, but you don't have to uh, lower off or bail off of a route just because there's a chance of horizontal loading. Next symbol you'll see, it looks like a carabiner that's open. Something like that. Here we go. I'll do it in a way so that way it's easy to see. It looks like that. And then you'll notice how it says 8 kilonewtons next to it. Which means that if the carabiner is loaded along its major axis, but the gate is held open by whatever reason, then it can only support 8 kilonewtons uh, of force. And so that's another thing to watch out for. You want to make sure that the gate is closed because that does add to the strength of the carabiner. Other things you want to avoid are anything being stuck in the gate. So you want to just make sure that's nice and clean, good attachment to the nose of the carabiner. You want to avoid stuff like uh, nose clipping the carabiner. If you were to wedge the rope where my thumb is in between the gate and the nose, this thing has been known to break in less than two kilonewtons of force, which you can easily generate if you have a large top rope fall. So that's a big one right there. And that's because it acts like a big ratchet or lever and it can just snap this carabiner. You can see videos online of people snapping carabiners because of that. Sometimes you also get on the spine, you get the year that it was made uh, just for retirement purposes. Since this is a metal carabiner, you don't really have to worry too much. Actually, all carabiners are made out of metal. So that means they can last quite a while, up to 14 years or something around that amount. You have to check the manufacturer to see what they would recommend. But uh, they help you out with that. CE is a testing standard enforced by the UIAA. There it is, kind of hard to see. UIAA. And then that's... Um, that's a specific test that they do on all the carabiners to make sure that they're actually working to the standards that we want for climbing. And so that's why a lot of carabiners will have a UIAA stamp on it. On the other side, 
usually you get the brand. This is a Mad Rock carabiner. I think they call this the uh, the uh, ultra light carabiner or so. It actually is very light. I think it's like 1.1 ounce or so. And uh, these are the carabiners that I'll use on my Alpine draws because I want really lightweight carabiners that uh, that are fully rated. So here I have the three main types of carabiners. <clears throat> there are three different types of carabiners out there. Um, one of which is a pair beaner, and you know it's a pair beaner because the gate and the spine, they flare away from each other. Yeah, they're also known as munter beaners, so some people will refer to them as a munter hitch compatible beaner, and it's all the same thing. You have D carabiners, which uh, they're just in the shape of a D. Maybe a better example would be this orange one that looks more like a D, but uh, those are useful for hooking yourself into a belay or your third hand. I uh, will rack my third hand on a D carabiner uh, just because I want a low profile carabiner that's still locking. And then here I have an oval carabiner. These things have gotten a bit more obscured over the years, you know, further back. If you look at videos of John Long or Ron Calc or any one of those guys, they'll have a lot of oval carabiners. They stopped um, really going for these because they are actually the heaviest and the weakest <laughs> carabiners out there. So uh, it's basically a double threat and like who wants to deal with that when you can have a lighter and stronger carabiner that does the same thing. So I bring this up because some people will use them more old school climbers. I actually uh, I bought a lot of these because of the book I had. Everyone had these attached to their cams and so... I got like 11 of them, but I don't use them anymore because they just are old and out of date. And these do the same job for less weight. So slide that one away. Now, the difference I'll use between uh, the carabiner and the D carabiner depends on application. For my ATC, I'll always have a pair carabiner with it because that just runs so much smoother with the rope, especially while repelling. Uh, I do not recommend uh, using a D carabiner for your belay device. And uh, you'll see, it will make a difference, especially again if you're going to do a lot of repelling. And it also helps out your rope. Um, one, it helps it uh, cause less damage and it'll last longer. And two is um, it will help your control while repelling down. This, this could be a little weird versus that. Um, and then... Um, and so I'll use this for like the rope part of my ATC. And again, I'll use something like this to attach myself to an anchor or for my third hand or um, or uh, something that isn't going to have a lot of rope playing through it. Now I'll use these ones for just about everything else. If you see my harness set up, then you'll see uh, how I rack my anchor materials on the carabiners like so. And I'll rack one non-locker with that. And then I'll do, uh, and then I'll use one of these carabiners to hook myself in with a clove hitch. Or um, I use them for alpine draws. You know, I use the Mad Rock Ultra Lights for my alpine draws. Um, and then I'll also hold the stuff like my belay gloves with it. I do want to use a full strength carabiner for holding belay gloves, even though I'm not going to use it. Uh, because if I do want to use it for a climbing application, then I can. It's a climbing carabiner. You want to avoid using those little D-ring carabiners that you can buy at Target for like five bucks. That can only hold like 200 pounds because that brings up some issues for sure. So those are the three main types. Again, pear, D, and oval. So that's uh, what you want to go with. Again, maybe skip the oval unless you ha want it for a specific purpose. But pear and D carabiners are very good for locking and then have a bunch of D carabiners for your non-locking. They don't really make non-locking pairs. Now there are many different types of locking carabiners. This one you've seen before. This is what we call a manual locking carabiner. You can, in order to lock it, you spin that thing, it's called a collet, all the way up, and you can't open up the carabiner anymore. And then you can do the classic mash test like you just saw me do, in order to make sure that it's not open. And then we get into auto-locking carabiners. So they're 
couple different types of auto locking carabiners. We call this one the two action uh, auto locker because what I have to do to open it up is twist. It's a big carabiner. Can't get it quite around my hand. There we go, twist and then open. And so the twist is the first one uh, action and then the opening is the second action. So that's a two action locking carabiner. Another example are the Edelrid HMS strike carabiners. It's a locker, that's the locking mechanism right there. You push it down and then you open up the gate. So it is a, a bit faster. And then um, I actually used to really love these carabiners. They were my main carabiners, but then I kind of broke <laughs> one. The, uh, the locker uh, fell off. All right, so here are my broken HMS ones. This one, I just opened up one time and then that locking mechanism just popped right out. So now I guess it's a regular carabiner. This one, I managed to save the locking one. You can see how the spring is gone, so it's just a regular carabiner. And then that locker just pops right out. So uh, yeah. And that was two completely different incidences where they just happened to break. So since then I've kind of stopped using these. I also had a couple of the D lockers, which I've never actually broken. This one's still working pretty well. They also do get stuck like that, so you gotta check them. They're just not very useful auto lockers. So uh, I've just stopped using them, but they are a good example of the dual action locking system. Right here is another little rig carabiner, and I really like this one. This is a triple action locking carabiner. So in order to open this up, you have to push the gate up, and then twist it, and then open it up. Yeah, it's got this little ball right there, which uh, keeps it from spinning. So you gotta push it up. Yeah, there you go, you see how that goes up and then twists? and then you can open it up finally. So, this is a very nice carabiner. I use this one on my ATC. It's my main ATC beaner at the moment, and uh, I really like it. You can see there's a, a little bit of repel wear. Actually, you can't see it too well. Maybe on that side a bit more. Uh, but even after doing tons of repels on it, it's not quite as worn as these black diamond ones. This one only got repelled on it like once, I think. And you can see some wear on it. I just recently picked up a few of these. Uh, they're the same size as those ones, so you can see. But this is the Black Diamond Magnetron carabiner. The way how it works is there's magnets in it. See that big piece of steel? And then you have two magnets in each of these yellow arms right here. And so uh, when the gate is open, the two magnets repel each other. You can see how they stay open. But once you let it close, that steel overrides the repel repel strength of the magnets and then they both suck into the steel and now you can't open it up. So I don't really know if this is a two action or triple action locker. I mean it kind of one, two, you could make that argument. But the fact that you need to pinch down on both, you can maybe even say one, two, three or something like that. I think it's somewhere in the middle. So uh, whether you have a double action or a triple action, that's more your comfort level or something completely new and different like this one. But uh, those are just the different types of auto locking carabiners out there. And there are a few, you know, exceptions or different styles, I should say, that are out there too. But um, as long as it's a marketed as a locking carabiner, that means it is a locking carabiner. Here's another example of wear on a carabiner. You can see these two large uh, uh, wear marks in this carabiner right here. This is a Mad Rock carabiner that I used uh, for a number of seasons. You can see it's really thick compared to like other carabiners, uh, but that's all just from repelling on it and belaying. So I ended up retiring this one. I think in the future I would uh, maybe go a bit further into the carabiner, but it was getting kind of difficult to use with my ropes at the time while uh, repelling with it. Like it just had a bit more resistance. And so uh, I ended up just retiring it. But this is an example of um, 
what, what happens to your carabiners, especially with repelling, just causes so much wear on them. And, uh, and you can, you can definitely feel it. Most manufacturers say within a millimeter is when you should retire it. Like if, uh, it wears back about a millimeter. That's about retirement age. Good way to test that is uh, just take two of the same carabiners and put them over top of each other. And then if you can see the other carabiner underneath, that's probably time to retire. So that's something to watch out for. But uh, this Madrock carabiner is actually a really good carabiner to use with your blade device. Here's another more specialty carabiner. You see it has this little band right here. That's a big difference. What you do is, this is made for belaying mainly. So you hook this into your belay loop. Where my fingers are is where the belay loop is. And then you can put your belay device, whatever you want to use on top, and it prevents cross-loading. That's the only reason of this wire right here. And that's the idea behind this carabiner is um, to prevent cross-loading. Because when you're belaying, especially on a sport route, it's kind of easy for your belay device to move around a whole lot. And so this just helps keep the... Uh, keep everything in the right orientation. They're kind of gimmicky, but people tend to like them a lot. They're also nice on glacier travel routes because they can kind of keep, uh, again, your carabiner from hopping all over the place and not accidentally cross-loading it. Even though, as I said before, I've fallen on many cross-loaded carabiners and been just fine. So a lot of people kind of just think this isn't worth it to get. Uh, this is also another Idlerid slide carabiner, by the way, so it's an auto locker. But uh, there are many of these car carabiners on the market, and you can see some of them have arms that go, that connect to the spine, and then they swing around and connect to the gate, and then that'll separate it. Other carabiners look like an hourglass, that Black Diamond has an hourglass carabiner, but uh, they all accomplish the same thing. You'll also notice how all of this, this carabiner, this, this one, this one right here, that one, this, that one. These are all pair beaners, and that's all because they have that flaring distinction between the spine and the gate of the carabiner, even though they all are different shapes. When you get into D carabiners, they're all kind of more or less the same shape in size. Yeah, uh, actually I think all of these are pretty much the same size. Let me get this thing off of here. Yeah, pretty much all of these are the same size, and they're all D carabiners, and they're all slightly different. However, parabiners, you do have a lot of variation in sizing, especially these two right here are good examples. And so me personally, I kind of like the smaller parabiners, because I have small hands, especially with something like the Magnetron. Uh, I will often climb with one of these bigger ones, though, just for... Uh, the uses that a really big carabiner can have. But me personally, just having something of that size, especially in an auto locker, can be kind of hard to deal with one-handed. See right there, I was struggling. So it's good to go to like REI or somewhere and then play around with a whole bunch of carabiners because they, they really do have a lot on the market and you can find the ones that work for you and the ones you like the most. Um, like me, for example, I'll use two different types of ultralight carabiners when they're non-lockers. And then I'll move on to something a little more heavy-duty or uh, ultralight in some cases for locking carabiners. My main ones that I'm currently using right now is like a couple of these. And then I bring this one and this one out with me along with this carabiner and this one for my ATC. So, and, and also this one for my third hand. So... Uh, I use a variety of different carabiners. They all sort of get the same job done, but it's just what I prefer in the moment. So, hope this video helps with deciding what carabiner you would like to get, or also helps you sort of line up your carabiners for what sort of situation you want them to you want to use them for. I would definitely recommend if you're gonna just build top ropes, then get a number of carabiners for your top rope, and then just some ultralight non-lockers for connecting the top rope anchor to bolts or anything like that. Sometimes with top ropes, I'll even pair a manual locker with an auto locker. Yeah, something like this. You do want to make sure they're about the same size and they work in that cross-loading or in that uh, opposite and opposed setup. And that the reason is if this one works its way loose on the rock, 
one, it's very unlikely that it'll work this one loose too, but if it does, and somehow it opens up, like it's wedged against the rock and opened up, all you have to do is flick the anchor, and it's automatically locked again. So, it's, it's worth it to mix and match and have a number of different carabiners in your quiver. So, again, I hope this video makes sense to you. If you have any questions, you can always leave a comment. If you have any carabiners you personally like, you can leave a comment about that as well. And then, um... I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.